Creole Parametric 4.0, Lesson 10, Part 2. We will create a drawing of the foot, the clamp foot, in this Part 2. So first of all, I want to open up my existing part. I always like to have this in session. And I can take a look at it, and I can see all the elements that are here, all the features. I make sure my tree filters have all been turned on. So I can see if anything is out of order or missing from here. And I can see that I set my datum A, B, and C. So everything is OK. It looks fine. I have my datum features turned off and my set datums are still displayed. In order to turn those off, I would have to go to my layers or turn them off here by hiding them. But I, I'll leave them on for now. So I'm going to leave this active on the screen, and I'm going to start a new drawing. I'll just use the default, but obviously it's the clamp foot drawing. And we're going to use a B size this time. And it'll put three views on here. Now, if the views look too small, I can make the views a different scale, or I can make the scale down here different, either way. So I'm going to go 2.5, like so. Right mouse button, I want to do my sheet setup. So I'm going to select my B size from the standard. And I've got this view over here, which I really don't need. So I'm going to click on it and delete that view. If I wanted to insert a view, I could put a general view. And I could stick one over here. And if I wanted to change it to isometric or another angle, I can actually change it to an angle that you specify. And since I can't move it yet, right mouse button and unlock it. And again, I'm just going to put it over here. In general, that's not a good place for it. You're supposed to keep this area empty on a sheet. All right, so first thing I noticed is I have my old style datum flags there. So I want to go and go to my options. And first of all, I might want to import my options from my config while I'm here. And that's the ones that I put under my Creo textbook. Click OK. And the next thing I want to do is I want to go to my Manage Session, Prepare, so that each one of these will give me a set of things to do. And I like to look at them in the beginning. Under Prepare, we have Drawing Properties. So Drawing Properties can be accessed here. Go to Options. And let me see if I can find drawing options here. I cannot find them. I thought there were another. I thought there was another place I could get to them. Now, normally I get them from my <coughs> prepare detail options, change, and we're just going to type in GT, and it'll fill in the rest because that's the one I do want the geometric tolerancing, and we want ASME. OK, and close. So you can see the datum tags changed. Now I'm going to click on the Annotate tab. And I'm going to start off by moving these things around a little bit. And I don't have to have them in both views. I could take this one out. I can't delete it because it's a feature of the part, but I can erase it. And C, and we'll leave B here. Now, this I could extend all the way up, but if I want to put a center line on the top, just to show you that, I'm going to leave it like it is here. Now, it is a little flaky. Whenever I do this, I've been doing this for, well, since uh, Pro Engineer 13. And some things, especially with these new footed symbols, they act a little funny. Sometimes you've got to pick on them a couple of times for them to work right. Now, for instance, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to move this one, and that's going to flop over there. Why? Well, we don't ask why. We just move it back to where we want it. I think I want it over here, like so. And I'll leave it like that. 
So I've got my two views in there. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the show model annotations and I'm going to select my datum, my axes in other words, and I'm going to click on the top and in the front view. And you'll see there's center lines or axes. These are really more center line than they are an axis. This is not an axis that you're using for construction. So I'm just going to put them in the top view. I don't need them in the front view because I've got the datum planes over the top of them. And I will select on it, and if I want to drag it down, whatever I wanted to do. So I can adjust them like so. All right, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to show all, first of all, see if there's any notes, and I don't think there's any notes on this one. And I'm going to select my dimensions. That's in the front here. Now, if I click on the top view instead, if I click on a feature, it'll just give me the dimensions for that feature. If I click on the whole view, it gives me all the dimensions. And if I go down here, hold my control key, click again, you'll see these dimensions are here. But I'm going to do the same thing. Hold my control key, and I'm going to select that front view again because there's nothing in there I really want. Now, I can move these around. I can do a lot of stuff, a lot of things here. But what I'd like to do is just move a few of them. First of all, I'm going to apply and then cancel. Oh, I only kept one of them. See? So again, depending on where you select, you're going to keep them all and cancel. Now, I'm going to window them in, right mouse button, and I'm going to clean up the dimensions. Now, this dialog... First of all, uncheck the snap lines, unless you want these real light snap lines all over your drawing. You can erase them later, but don't usually use them. And traditionally, since I started off many years ago as a drafter, we always made the distance between the dimensions the same as the distance from the object line. I know the standard says less than that, but it always seems to be too close. Regardless, we're going to move ours. And you can see it just moved everything a half an inch away. Now, it did not move the diameter here and I'm going to right mouse button and I'm going to flip the arrow and I've got the dimensions in here this dimension maybe I'll move over here again I would have put something different I would probably change the uh, for the diameter I would add this chamfer on there and do something a little bit better than this silly dimension and we have our radius here we'll keep that one now there's really nothing in the front view if I wanted to move this one to the front view, view I could Normally, I like to put that dimension where it's showing in the non-diameter view for a solid. Again, it's an old habit. But we'll put that one there so something showing up in the front view at least. Now, in the top view, I can go and clean a few things up. I'm going to drag back some of these extension lines, clean it up a little bit. This one here, too. Now, what I'd like to do is have a section here. So that looks pretty good, except for this one here. Okay. So it kind of cleaned up everything. But I'd like to have a section. So first of all, I want to see what the visibility is on these. We've got a lot of lines here. These are the tangency lines. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go back to Layout tab, and I'm going to click on these two Hold down my control key and gather both of them. Right mouse button and go into properties. Now this is all grayed out because since I selected two views, it's only going to allow me one thing and that's the display style. So I do want my hidden lines. In fact, maybe I don't. Let's take out the hidden lines. Now let's leave them in for now. But later we might want to take them out. And dimmed for my tangency. Apply. Like so. And again, you could take those tangencies off if you wish. So I still would like to have this view as a section. So I can click on it, right mouse button, or I can just double click on it, go into sections, 2D section, plus. But I never created a section when I was in the model here. So I'm going to create one now. Planar, single, done. I'm going to type in A and hit enter, 
don't worry about case. It always changes it to capital. And never type AA because you'll get section AAAA instead of just section AA. So your section, it wants to know what you're going to cut with. I'm going to cut with this datum plane in the front view. And if you go way to the end here, you'll see that there are some other options. One of them is arrow display. And I can pick on the arrow, the view, the arrow display, and it'll put arrows here. I can also later use my right mouse button to do the same thing. So if I click on this and I apply, it says section AA, arrow display, click down here, apply, and I have my cutting plane. So I'm going to click OK, and you can see this has been defined now. And right mouse button, you know, you get a lot of other choices here, so always take a look at what's going on. Add arrows is the same as adding the arrows in that dialog. Now, very simple drawing. Normally, you won't put section identifiers on this, and you won't put a cutting plane because it's fairly obvious what it is. Now, up here, let's go to view display again, and let's turn off. Let's see what happens if we put none for tangency, and we put no hidden, which is traditional for a section. Apply. Okay, so it's cleaner. I don't know why that came back. All right, so... We have our view. You can move the dimensions around a little bit. Um, what I want to do is look over here in the model tree and see that I have a section A down here. And I also want to go and select on my cross-hatching and double-click. And you'll see I've got a lot of choices. So, for instance, let's say we wanted to change the angle or the spacing. Let's just do the spacing. And um, let's make it big just for now. It's a little too big, but you can actually give a value for it. And for an angle, let's uh, see what happens when we change the angle. Let's just change the angle to that. Done. Now, this is the standard hatching for iron, and it's the standard hatching for a default for all cross-section. But what I noticed is, first of all, I never put a part material attached to this file. So I'm going to Go back to my other screen, my other session here, or same session, but different view. So I've got the model up here. And you'll notice that the section is here. So I'm going to make it active. And I'm also going to show the section. And I'm also going to go and edit. And I think what I'll do is pick something different out of my long list. And... Let's pick uh, steel, and let's change the color, and make it a little bit bigger. I could change the angle here, too. Apply. So I, I can leave it on. Now, the other thing is, let's click on the model, right mouse button, and let's go to Edit Materials, and... Well, let's just use our standard one, the old legacy materials. Now, I put steel on there. We know on the drawing it's using iron as its cross-hatching. And this time, let's just use, uh, let's use brass. Okay. I will save it. I will go back over to my drawing, and I will save it here. And then I will also go and I'm going to regenerate it. Now, for some reason, I have sectioning here, okay, which corresponds to a default of the standard way of sectioning, a certain distance between everything. And I have this being really cast iron. That's the material in reality. But it's just showing up as the drawing default. 
if I go over to my clamp foot, and here's my section, I'm showing I'm using something completely different. I'll even go to cork, anything. And then if I go back over to my file material, I have brass. So basically I have three separate things here. They don't seem to play well with each other. But just to let you know, sometimes there's things, if you want this to reflect on your drawing, then you have to change the drawing ones. You have to change this one. There's a lot of things you can do. In general, you're going to almost always use just the standard cross hatching. Nothing more that you, most people would ever use. And I think this concludes the second part. Let me just check on it. I want to make sure I covered most everything up. I did. All right. So that's the end of part two.